Jordan won neutral grays. Let's add a bit of streetwear. I think I'm going to add every podcast episode do one element of streetwear and culture because we, I am the number one culture and streetwear podcast in the world uh, as voted by the Streetwear and Culture National Board of Adjudicators. Okay, anyway, so this is news from Hypebeast for all you Jordan 1 fans, people that like to wear those Ease Bravado jeans, Vlown jeans, jeans with little diamantes in it, people that like to wear um, chrome husk stuff and all that malarkey, people that like to wear needles, flannels, and you know, all that stuff. You're going to be happy with these shoes because those are the only people that see wearing these kind of trainers, isn't it? Um, they've sort of like bring them back from the dead. But this is news from Hypebeast that says the Jordan 1 High 85 Neutral Grey is rumored to make a return. Now, I remember these shoes popping up mostly during, you know, from the influencers online who kind of, you know, wear that sort of garb. I'm assuming that like the Ian Connors, the Lucas Sabats, all those kind of people and the kids that wear those flared jeans and wear those ripped jeans, the East Bravado jeans I mentioned earlier. They kind of made this a thing, um, which is cool to see because I remember there was an era when, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, Don C and Kanye and all those guys were kind of at the forefront to kind of wearing you know retro jordans and bringing that whole thing back and it was really uh prided upon to have crumbly jordans right so you could kind of flex you could wear it once and be like posting a picture on instagram like oh fuck man i didn't know that my jordans from 25 years ago made out this material that doesn't really age well and crumbles once it catches once it gets a bit of humidity crumbled right this is that kind of image where you kind of post a picture of your soul crumbling as you walk down the streets of manhattan but I like I like that. I thought that was a really cool change. But of course, you know, Jordan 1s have kind of got a whole life of their own since then. They've become the probably the most popular shoe outside of a the Yeezy and a Dr. Martins, right? They're very, very popular. They're very much uh, widely kind of heralded amongst a certain demographic of people. And they have that weird appeal. They are able to appeal to someone like myself, who's a casual sneakerhead, right? I just wear trainers that I like. They're able to appeal to the sort of like Paris Fashion Week, um, Art Basel type of influencer guy, right? That kind of, you know, drinks lean and has baggy jeans. And they also apply to the quintessential streetwear sneakerhead who has, no, the quintessential sneakerhead, night talk sneakerhead, who's sort of like has you know four pairs of bread jordan fours right because they they like the particular style of the 2001 the 2002 the one that came with the defining moments pack right they have all these they have the same color of the same shoe basically based on the model of the year it came out or they have doubles of the same jordan because they want to keep one on ice so that's a really effective uh, marketing uh, plan that they've kind of affected with the jordan one and i'd also add to the fact that i think part of the reason why they also might have a bit of a resurgence once they do come back out in this colorway is partly due to the last dance documentary on netflix uh focusing on jordan's um quest to win was it six championships right in a row so that might be part of it there might be you know there might be even harder to get now due to the last dance if jordan's were already hard to get previously because of all those influences online it's going to be even diff more difficult now the fact that casual consumers have seen the importance of jordan are able to put some context to it because you know it's all well and good wearing jordan brand clothing and knowing he's kind of cultural relevancy but watching that documentary you can't help but respect the guy even more and want to rep that clothing even more so right you want to like even even jordan team stuff looks a bit more appealing after watching the last dust documentary and i'm probably sure i'm not in the minority there so it's new from hypebeast it's got a picture here of one of the ogs you know og shoes just look fucking gorgeous don't they from the off from the kind of um off-white midsole to the crinkling on the collar to the big mushy soft foam tongue there exposed just absolutely gorgeous the shape look at that toe box look how flat that profile is just beautiful 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 so here's it says um news it says um highly coveted jumpman fans and archive fashion crowd like i mentioned previously edge on one neutral gray is also a neutral gray is now rumored for a return after the arrival of the new beginnings pack reports are now noting that an updated version of the jordan one in the original white gray colorway is set to drop next year updated is is the crucial part what do they mean that hopefully they're not going to add like fly wire to it or any kind of stupid materials just make them as they were pre previously because it would be cool if jordan i don't know why they don't do that you know how they have like the ada superstars 80s that are sort of like uh distressed and they kind of have like a bit of a faded soul and they have a very um 
you know vintage inspired last and structure to them are very slim very narrow right harking back to the to the actual original shoe i wonder why they don't do a division of jordans especially the ones that go from like jordan one to maybe four where they essentially are able to make them in the same way they made them in the past maybe because they don't have the molds anymore cause i don't really agree i don't think that's a, 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 an accurate excuse you can reverse engineer stuff um, especially with the money that they have in the coffers they should be able to do something like that but i'd love to have, to have some sort of line that essentially is able to make uh prefabricated or pre-distressed or stuff that is directly influenced by the stuff that came out in the 80s like one for one like from the way that it looks to the height to the materials used to pick it apart and remake it and if they sold that for like 250 dollars or 300 dollars i'm sure they'd sell out i'm sure they would update materials really good leather like that'd be really cool but they don't do that they just retro the original in the in the updated materials and they're usually so hit and miss right it's like the, it's like the backboard jordan ones right they've got really good leather and then another black toe jordan one comes out and the leather's really shit there's no real continue there's no real continuity right it's just all kind of all over the shop um so that's very that's worrying there that rumor but it says yeah if rumors are true the release will serve as the first time jordan brand has retro the two-tone mix sits its debut um, as part of the original AJ1 lineup in 1985. The AJ1 185 neutral grey is expected to arrive with a high quality white leather upper accented with grey panels to convey the signature 85 high top construction. Despite serving as a popular colour in the 80s, Nike and Jordan have notably strayed away from neutral grey in favour of more colour based design, which obviously goes to show the kind of appetite for to consumers and also going to show how slow moving of a juggernaut nike and jordan brand are because these shoes have been about on the scene for all ages you they've, i'm sure they've probably been up on people's mood boards for time in the design studios at nike so for them to take this long to bring them out just shows how slow moving it has been um you would re, I, I would like a bit more of a reactiveness when it comes to these kind of shoes so that you're kind of tapping into the moment but again maybe the timing is perfect you know off the back of the last dance this probably might be the best opportunity to really make some big 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 bucks on these um it says yeah despite the, the, the neutral gray but as interest in vintage styling and nike's retro has continued to grow so has the price of neutral gray sneakers aside from the og air jordan 85 neutral gray fetching for almost four thousand dollars on the u.s resale market it might be because they're they're probably the last the last one before they updated the last where you can actually wear them because i haven't seen a pair of the neutral grays uh missile kind of fall apart maybe it's a, it was a last shoe before they sort of update the materials where you can kind of wear them because i remember i had a, a couple of air trainer two and tw2s that was similar where if you got the model just after the one i had the number two or you got the three you were able to wear them day in day out because um they updated whatever polyurethane midsole they had you know some material component made them a bit more wearable i'm not too sure or maybe it depends on who you bought them from if they were able to kind of keep them in a cool area blah 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 it's after the the yeah so four thousand dollars assembly colored penetrator and penetrator gt then i've also gone for normal prices report your price at two hundred dollars the edge of the 185 is now rumored to come out sometime in 2021 so yeah check them out hopefully they come out soon good news from the old hype